Hi everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the third session of day two of the Zambian Conservation Careers Fair. I have two interesting guests in this session that will talk to us about getting the job and what happens afterwards. Ever thought of what happens after you get the job? And I know a lot of us work very hard. You're applying every day, you're getting feedback. What happens after that? In the session, we get to find out all that. I will let my two guests introduce themselves. Let's start with you, Peter. Thanks. Um, my full name is uh, Peter Simoleon Pondo. Okay. I'm a senior recruitment consultant at Precision Recruitment International. Great. I've been working at PRI for seven years now okay. and still going strong. Oh, wow, seven years. Let's go to you, Malama. Hi, everyone. My name is Malama Lumboy. I am a recruitment and labor brokering consultant. I've been working for Precision Recruitment International from 2016, so I've been there for a while as well, but not as much as Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Still a lot of experience on this table. Exactly. And speaking exactly. of experience on this table, <coughs> please be sure to ask whatever questions you have about uh, what happens after getting the job. If you mm. have any questions that you would like to ask, please leave them in our comment section mm. and the two experts will be able to answer the questions later on. I think we can start the ball rolling with mm -hmm. something that's pretty basic, mm -hmm. but somehow underrated soft skills mm -hmm. let's start there what what exactly are they and how how does one go about acquiring these because i understand i don't think there is an institution you can go and say i want to learn mm. soft skills uh, yeah i want to learn how to be friendly or how to yeah. to talk to people mm. better somehow yeah. okay so i will take i'll, I'll start the yeah. get the ship yeah. sailing so soft skills are very simple i'm not going to complicate anything mm -hmm. they are just your personal attributes or habits that shape how you work mm -hmm. full stop so then makes you kind of think oh my god what are my habits so for example myself mm -hmm. um i'm a team player very simple it, uh, it's easy for me because i'm a very bubbly person so mm -hmm. i work really well in team oriented kind of spaces so that's a type of, uh, of an example of a soft skill. Another thing would be communication skills. Mm -hmm. Another thing would be um, punctuality. So habits, again habits. So if you're someone who's late, you better check yourself, huh? Because huh? that's not a soft <laughs> skill you want to be carrying around with Definitely yourself. Definitely not. <laughs> so those are the types of soft skills. So how do you, how do you, like you said, you can't go to university and just wake up and have these soft skills. Mm -hmm. You first, obviously, with myself, I have to sit myself down and say, okay, what do I want out of my life? Mm. What habits do I have, can I form in my everyday life that set me up for success? Mm -hmm. For example, I'm a morning person. I know not everyone is a morning person, but for me, I'm up by 4.30, I take time to pray, I go to the gym, I work out, I'm, I make sure I'm in the office by 7.30, which is the time we start. Even after doing all that? <laughs> yep, wow. <laughs> start early. So, I mean, or even just that already sets me up to yeah. get to work on time, to be in there working out. Obviously, there's a direct um, relationship between you, your emotions and your workout. If you mm -hmm. work out, it mm -hmm. pumps you up. You're like, oh, let's go. I'm ready to the get this. Kicking in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now imagine if you wake up, you start work at 7.30 and I wake up 7.30. Can you just imagine <laughs> the kafwa fwa that would be there <laughs> by the time I get to the office at 7.30? So, I mean, I think that's just a general summary of soft skills so it's soft skills are your personal habits that sh f shape how you work okay yeah I, I really want to dwell on the time management okay. one that mm. you brought up because I feel like <gasps> it's it's not something that a lot of people it's something that we, we can see as quite a concern especially yeah. with people running late and dare I say the thing called Zambian time exactly mm. in the workplace exactly. wh what has been your experience uh, w with time management I'm, no, I'm going to start from the beginning, but not too... Okay, when I just got my first job in Australia, mm -hmm. my first job was as a cleaner, and we had to get to the office to the nursing home by about I think 5.50 yep. but everyone oh, wow. else had to get there by 6 which used to agitate me mm -hmm. and I remember I would get there on time but the other cleaners would get there at 6.15 and you see the interesting thing about that was I didn't even stay long as a cleaner two months later I kid you not I got promoted to the kitchen washing dishes which is by wow. far better than sweeping <laughs> the ground <laughs> so I mean never take it lightly yeah. because number one how always I always tell um, my mentees Mm -hmm. it's very important how you show up and showing up starts from what time you get there if someone mm -hmm. says 8 8 well it would be good if you get there 8.50 even better if you get there eight, uh, sorry my bad 7.50 yeah. or 7.45 but ev it doesn't matter even if it's one minute I it always kind of makes you mm -hmm. the other person waiting for you going and go well I mean yeah. you're still late we agreed 8 mm -hmm. so it's very time is very mm -hmm. essential it always it 
first it's part of the first impressions act Big. you come yes. late Big. yes Chapwa. So I'm going to add on on that. Yes. We've had instances in the past where a candidate's going for an interview, mm -hmm. and we communicate like we're the middleman in this. So mm -hmm. you've got the candidate, you've got the client. So we set up interviews and everything. Would confirm, okay, your interview's starting at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And they would wait sometimes. They're in traffic. Uh -huh. They're late. Yeah. Instead of at least updating us, then we could update the client. Yeah. Say, okay, they're running a bit late. Maybe uh, they got held up or something happened. They would wait, they're late, then they reach there like, oh, just reach now. Like, what happened? Mm. First of all, you're not supposed to be late. Exactly. Secondly, you could have communicated. Yes. Now the client is waiting for you. You're going to go in there nervous, uh, ready with a bad first impression. Yes. So that, that never works. And I know, yes, the in time thing. <laughs> it needs to end, is, guys. Has been said. It and really it's, does. It needs I know, to it's, end. It's like really bad. It's really bad. And I think it's partly what's uh, making our country look seem slow. Yeah. And, and we've had this as well from people from different countries that come to work here, the first thing they'll say is like, Zambians Hi. seem a bit yeah. over-relaxed. Over, over yeah. They take things very slow, come late and do this, oh, like, oh, let me just do this first and that. Like, everything is almost casual. Yeah. So that urgency is not there, and that's mm -hmm. really important, and that's one of the big traits of uh, showing an impression of success. Well, yeah. you've heard it here. Get there in good time and communicate. I really like yes. that you put those two together. Exactly. Yeah, because sometimes there's certain things you can't avoid. Yeah. Exactly. It's understandable, exactly. but if you communicate, it helps the other people prepare. No. Also, exactly. if you get there in good time, it gives you time to prepare. So time management is a big deal in, 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 in forming big. your career and going ahead, obviously. Yes. I, would, I will switch to you, Peter, okay. and talk about um, basic writing skills mm. in getting the job or after getting the job okay w what exactly should i focus on so i've got the job i worked mm. really hard i constantly applied i finally got the job what am i focusing on now i know one of the things that a lot of people have emphasized on even in the last session was yeah. you need to have well decent writing <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely oh, you can do a little bit more better you can do better by investing in yourself but decent writing Let, let's hear what you have to say and you can tell us a bit a, a bit of stories on okay. what, what you've, you've experienced <laughs> sure with okay so start from the writing part mm -hmm. i know you did say um got the job but start from the writing part yes so obviously um you're going to send your cv you're going to send an application letter to the potential employer mm -hmm. so what a lot of candidates need to remember is when you send that you're not going to be there in person to give them that mm -hmm. so the first impression they're going to get of you even before they meet you face to face is that document you sent them yep. how you send it matters we yep. we would sometimes put adverts out and you get a cv they do not even indicate what they're applying for on the subject they just send a cv and you just luckily we open because we're recruitment um consultants so we just want to see what's there would open but that's a very bad way of doing it yeah send your cv application attached indicate subject heading what is it about um greeting um in the body of the email mm. kind regards sign out it has to be at least minimum of that because mm. you have to remember an HR manager is in the office yes. busy doing other things this is a random email comes in doesn't indicate anything and mm. he's looking like okay you might just skip it and see the other email which is above yours which has actually got a subject heading mm -hmm. so that's very important okay coming into the CV now and the application letter always try to candidates should always try to make sure that they read through and everything is in order as uh -huh. my colleague Emma said yesterday um, contact details all the information Again, this is very big on the way they, they sell themselves mm -hmm. because, again, the employer is looking at the CV yeah. without you to explain, to say, oh, that, 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 that you're... That was a typo I meant to write. Yeah, <laughs> I, I meant to say this. <laughs> yeah. And worst off, some would send without a date. Or they would say a date, maybe, let's say, going in this order from maybe, say, 1999 to, to 2005, 2005, 2006. And then you expect them to carry on going that way. And it goes mm -hmm. back, they'll add again to maybe 2003, 2004. And you're like, okay, well, why is this date here not inconsistency with other dates and what happened here so I always try to guide them when we meet them for pre-screen like it has to be in order you don't want to lose the HR manager who's going through your CV you want them mm -hmm. to go through your CV without you explaining to them like oh I meant to say that then that day they need to be able to look at your CV mm. and know this is what they're talking about this is where they started yes. this is where they are to date and that's where they're going as well try and add a bit of um, more detailed information to your CV responsibilities and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they can know, for instance, okay, Mina is working for the conservation. Is she supervising anyone there? Yes. Does she have a team of how many? All these little things which you can indicate, which a lot of people forget to add, yeah. so tells the employer exactly how much capability you've got. Mm -hmm. okay. So when they see these small things, oh, I'm manager, don't just say I'm a manager. <laughs> I'm a manager, I'm managing a team of this much. If it's you're in charge of a storehouse or uh, a store, store this big, the square meters, a uh, team of this many, and that, that. 
uh, items in the shop of approximately 2,000. This already paints the picture and the one who's looking at your CV. And okay. before meeting you, they already know, okay, this one's at that level. You call, you're coming in now for the interview, that's a different thing altogether, but they've already got a good idea of what you are. Now they're just basically trying to match that yes. with a person. Mm. So now I'm going to jump a bit. Yes. Now you've got the job. Yes, so got let's, the job. Yeah, so let's say all oh, that was good. You've got the job, you start. A good thing to have in mind is your goals. Excuse a good okay. thing to have in mind is your goals. Mm -hmm. So this is when before you get the job, have your goals in mind. Um, I like the way Malama said, she already started as a cleaner, mm -hmm. she rose up. If so if she's explaining that to me, that already tells me that she's ambitious. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else yeah. might just think like, oh, she just, maybe she was lucky, but no, that already tells me. So when I meet a candidate, they talk like that, it already tells me they're ambitious. Mm -hmm. And they've got drive, they know where they're going, they want something more than what they already have. So when you've got a goal, you've got a direction, you've got a guide, you're yeah. going with that. So you have your long-term goal, then you've got your short-term goals yes. to guide you step by step to reach your long-term goal. When that's in place, it's going to guide you. Even if you move from one company to the other, those goals are going to guide you. Yes. Unfortunately, we get some candidates who would say, um, I saw an advert for this role. Maybe they're finance, and they just see an, a random advert for maybe an admin, and they just think, okay, you know what, here, I'm an assistant accountant. That one says admin manager. And that's even closer. You've got some very different type of roles. And they'll say, no, I want to apply for that as well. I know I can do the job. Like, yes, you can do it, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's not really in lines, so we even have to guide them sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not really in lines with what you, you studied, and it's not really in lines with what, what you're aiming for. Mm -hmm. So you can't just get one job just because you think, oh, it's going to pay more money, and then you get the job, then what happens next? Before you know it, you're going to be frustrated. Sure. You're going to have a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. You won't want to do your work. you just be reaching work to sit on a chair and show you're at work, but you're mm -hmm. not doing your work. That's not important. Okay. I love the way Steve, Steve Jobs said it. Get a job you love. I think it was Steve Jobs. Get a job you love, and that way you're going to do it with passion. Yeah, you're never yes. there. So when you do that, that goes back to your goals. You've got your goals. Now you know even where, where you're applying for. Mm -hmm. You apply for a company, you get the job, you know you're going with that flow. Systematic, you're enthusiastic. People want to mm -hmm. work with you. Promotions from there come easier because now you're putting in 100%. Exactly. Your seniors are seeing that. Exactly. Before you know it, promotion is in, in line, they'll consider you first. With a bad attitude, no goals, you just go any which way. Any which way. Mm. So that's the first step. Set your goals. Go with that. 10 years, uh, 15 years, you know which, way, which direction yeah, you're you going. To much that. easier, much, much easier than you just saying, oh, I want to get a job. And I do, I do understand where some candidates come from mm -hmm. because um, some of them yeah. after school, the main thing is they want to start working. Mm. So they're just like, okay, whatever comes, I'm open, I'm, I'm keen. It. I'm, it, I'm yes. keen, I'm keen. And yes, that is okay for you to gain experience from the beginning, from any which way you can. But you always have to have the goal in place. So even if you start somewhere, which is not directly where you would want to be, always have the goal in your mind. Okay. So as soon as that opportunity comes, you go with it and you grow with that. That's the easiest way to build up in your career. Mm. Okay. I love that you say to always have a goal, but I will ask from a perspective of mm. someone that, well, I just got this job also and yeah. I'm trying to navigate and learn more about it. Mm. Maybe this is an entry level. Do I always have to have a goal? What happens if I don't really know what I want to do? Which I think has been the case for most people. Mm. You know you want to do something, but you don't know what it is. Exactly. How do I go about this? How do I begin to set goals if I don't even know what I want to do? Okay. So a good way to add that is you could do some research. Mm. One, when you join any company, you're going to have some seniors there. So yes, they might be busy most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, she talked about mentor mentoring as well. She mentors some girls, and she's got mentors as well. When you've got someone that you can look up to and ask some advice, see which direction it's going, that way you can also know the career path and this job you've got. Mm. So let's say you just got it randomly, or oh, unexpectedly rather, uh -huh. and now you're thinking, okay, I want to do a great job. I don't even know where to start, but you're in the job. So a good way is to get some guidance, do as much research as you can. That way you're knowing which way you're going to go. So this can even help you create a goal now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're researching, you're going to find out more about how the company works, how this position, the growth pattern is for this position, mm -hmm. where you can be in the next five years, how long it's going to take you to reach uh, manager level, for instance, what qualifications and skills you need to get that top job, to, to get that promotion. Because, again, in a company there may be a promotion, but you do not have sufficient qualifications. Maybe mm -hmm. you've got a certificate in, in, in a course, and they're looking for a degree for you to get that particular role of advertised. So with all your research done, this will guide you and show you what you need to mm -hmm. get to that level. Okay. So research is a good thing. So even if you've got the job, always try to research, okay. always try to keep up to date, always try to look at what's new and how you could improve yourself. Okay. 